I have the pleasure now of speaking with Anne Enright, who is a shelter veterinarian working in community clinics in Melbourne, Australia. Um, and she is here today uh, speaking with me about cat friendly principles. And cat friendly principles are something that international cat care has launched, and they represent an ethos that champions the cat in all of our work. And there are seven in total. The first three are dedicated to the cat and their respect cats, keep cats well and do cats no harm. And the last four are about people and how we work with cats and with each other to deliver good welfare. And they are be solution driven, communicate for cats, collaborate for cats and evolve for cats. So um, Anne, thank you for joining me today. Um, could you talk us through, please, what do you make of cat-friendly principles? What do they mean to you? Yeah, hi, Lindsay. Yeah. Um, well, the cat-friendly principles, uh, I think they're a really good framework that people can refer to that highlight the important differences between the different types of cats and the temperaments and the natures of the cats that people may encounter just in their everyday activities or they may some, a type of cat that they may own or deal with. And I think the principles are really clear and they're straightforward and they offer an opportunity for people of different levels to actually understand the importance of under, you know, working with cats and understanding their nature. And if people are interested in learning more, they also provide the opportunity for that. Wow. So I think they're really useful. They're a really useful for item. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And... um. Today, we're going to talk specifically about the first principle, which is respecting cats. Um, and that's explained as respecting the diversity of the species and understanding mm -hmm. the individual cat. Uh, and why do you think it's important that we respect cats? Because um, cats are my absolute favorite <laughs> animal ever. <laughs> so, um, but aside from that, um, I think. It's important if you're wanting to get the best relationship between a person and their cat, then it's important that people understand the nature of the cat or the personality of the cat that they have. Mm -hmm. And then if they can work with it and, and actually meet the requirements of the cat, then you're going to actually have a much better relationship with with your pet or the, the cat that, you know, might be in your yard or, mm -hmm. or where you come across cats, cats that you work with. But it's it contributes to a better all-round welfare mm -hmm. service for the cat and also the people too because if you know how to actually respond to the to what the cat is asking for you to, to give, mm -hmm. then it's also a safety issue as well. And so, you know, if you know that the cat's not keen on being touched, then don't try and pick it up and cuddle it because, you know, you're going to possibly get injured and the animal might get injured as well. So mm -hmm. I think that actually... Um, Knowing how to respect the cat and what they're needing it actually sets both the animal and the person up for success. Mm, mm, very good. Thank you. And as you and I were talking about before I hit record, you know, you identified there are different types of cats with very different needs. Um, mm. Yeah, and some, I often think of them too, like you could relate them to like working with people, work colleagues or family members or Mm. you know things like that because there will be some work colleagues or family members that don't want to interact with you or they're very introverted and they just want to come and do their bit and then not be disturbed and then you go to the other extreme where's the family member or the colleague that wants to be the life of the party they you know want to come in and hug and kiss everybody and all the rest of it and you know and you may not like that mm, indeed I think. you've got the others in between as well and you need to work out a what you like and then what you're prepared to be involved with. Mm. That's the same with a cat. Mm. So. Yeah, very good. Thank you. And Anne, I know I know that um you you obviously work a lot with cats, but you also work with the community. In your experience, how do you how do you champion respecting cats in your work with people and, and with the animal itself? I suppose initially when I started out, because I do a lot of shelter work, and initially when I started out, we we looked at it as from the point I'm talking like 15 or more years ago now, and you know, hindsight's fantastic and you learn new things as you go along. We looked at it from the perspective that it was, you know, we had to teach people what to do. 
mm-hmm. and we needed to make sure that they did what we said. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you need to now. We don't. I don't take that approach so much. It's you need to understand what the person has mm-hmm. and what they're capable of doing, and you need to be able to help them understand what they've got and then how they can make that fit mm-hmm. with the animal that they're possibly choosing to adopt or the animal that they have. So it's you. I suppose you you have a slight advantage if you have someone who's wanting to adopt a cat because I do a lot of shelter work. So people come in and ask, you know, we want to adopt a cat. And so then you've got the opportunity to work out what they have, what they need, what they can provide, and you can then match it up a little bit more successfully. But you need to look at it from the other perspective too. For somebody that has a cat or has has a, a home situation, and you need to work out with them how you can help them marry the two together so that you can make it a much more successful environment and relationship. Mm. And I think leading by example is the only way to be. Mm. Excellent. I agree. Thank you. And in your experience as a sector of people working with own cats, and that could be vets or nurses or shelter workers or mm. you know people who go out and do TNR or people who engage with the community, um, what do you think is one thing we could do better to give cats the respect they need to have a good quality of life? Um, I think from the Australian perspective, um, uh, I think we need to provide more opportunity for um, assistance with desexing. Like we have a cat overpopulation problem mm. like everywhere else as well. Uh, there's controversy sometimes with the environmentalists and the wildlife people because you know the two can can cause trouble so i i think there needs to be a better understanding of the importance of desexing and microchipping your pet so that it leads to a better understanding of how to care for your pet and so if you've got a better understanding of how to care for your pet then you may not just let it roam and go out predating other other animals or um, bothering neighbours or all these sorts of things which cats get blamed for. We know that they don't do all of it, Mm. but they can be blamed for that sort of thing. And I think if you can encourage people to get their cats desexed and then obviously you've got all the positive health flow-ons from that and then you, you create sort of a more knowledgeable community and then if you've got a more knowledgeable community, you've got a more understanding community, and then I think also that provides you with the opportunities to have a more harmonious and, and positive and successful relationship on, on all fronts. And my last question for you, Anne, uh, what do you think a future would look like for cats if they were truly respected? I would like to see a future where there would be more cats that are cared for properly. Mm. Um, I would like to see a future where there were fewer unowned stray cats that need to fight and fend for themselves because that causes, you know, leads to disease and injury and suffering and all of that. So I would like to see less of that. And I would like to see um, Cats that have the opportunity, and they don't have to have like a specific owner, they can be looked after by a a few people, so like the community cats. I would like to see um, opportunities where the owners of the animals can have access to information and knowledge so that they can become more knowledgeable on cat ownership behaviour, knowing that they need to be wormed and fleed, for example, you know, simple things. And I would like to see an opportunity for the cats to have um, access to veterinary care Mm. as well, so that you would get happier, fewer, but healthier cats. Mm. And that's exactly a lot of the work that you're doing through your community clinics, correct? Indeed, well, that's one of our goals, yes. Mm. Yeah, to reduce the numbers of cats so that the ones that we do have are cared for. in a a better manner. Excellent. And thank you so much for talking with me today. It's okay. It's my pleasure. It was fantastic.